What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into the War for Earth 3. This will be issue number 1 of 2, but it will be playing out in multiple other lines as well. More specifically, it will be playing out in Suicide Squad. This is what everything has been building up to. This is going to be the grand finale for our Infinite Frontier Suicide Squad. Finally bringing everything around and bringing it to a close. What we are seeing is the future begin to unfold. Because in Future State, we saw Amanda Waller. She took over Earth 3. She imprisoned the crime syndicate and she used her own Justice League taking control and protecting Earth 3 from the rest of the multiverse. And while that is the future state story that we were told, and it looks like it might be heading in that direction, there are definitely some alterations. To get yourself completely caught up on everything that has been going on, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to take you to a playlist that will get you completely caught up on this entire storyline as we come to the climax. Be sure to buy the comics, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this very limited series, we are picking Picking up on Earth 3 and we have Ultraman and Power Ring. They are both sitting here being celebrated. The entirety of the crime syndicate are being celebrated for 10 years of being in control. 10 years of tyrannical dictatorship. And the truth of the matter is that Ultraman, he is tired of all of this. The day in, day out of government diplomacy and trying to keep a society running is not really what he's signed up for because what he wanted was to feel like a god. He wanted to be worshipped. And so finding himself just completely bored, he burns this place down to the ground, incinerating everyone and everything around him. He takes off and right now downtown Metropolis, they have a portal opening up and we see an entire army coming out of the gateway. And this army, it is being led by Amanda Waller. This is the army that she has amassed over this entire time. Having Bloodsport go from multiverse to multiverse, grabbing individuals, using Lazarus Resin to bring some of them back to life. She has an entire army of villains and individuals spanning all of time, and they all have one goal in mind. They are taking Earth Three With Match aka Superboy not really wanting to play ball, we see Etrigon the Brainiac 666 use some magic on him and turns him more or less into freaking Grundy. And so as if this wasn't a spectacle enough, Amanda Waller taps into every satellite, puts her face on every screen, and lets it be known that they are here to liberate. And that once everything is said and done, you won't have to worry. Your world, your earth will be safe. But today, it is going to come with great violence. And so with all of this currently going on, Ultraman, he doesn't find himself concerned with that. His eyes are on Gotham City. And that is because right now, Superwoman, she is finding herself entertained by Owlman. And Superwoman, she is doing this just to get under the skin of Ultraman. Just to make him mad to see his temper rise. This is all but a game to her. With Power Ring trying to let him know what is going on down in the city, Ultraman, he cares not. Going and heading straight for Gotham, he tells Power Ring to go deal with Amanda Waller and whatever it is on his own. And so Power Ring going in, he doesn't hold back any punches. And honestly, this is just a bloodbath. 
Power Ring is just mowing through all kinds of heroes, vigilantes, and anti-heroes alike, ripping through the entire army that Amanda Waller has. This is something Amanda Waller, she anticipated. She knew exactly what she was going up against. She knew exactly what the odds would be. And for Power Ring, she brought a secret weapon. And from behind Power Ring, we see Black Hand. And with a single touch, we see Power Ring, he is brought down to his knees. With one member of the crime syndicate taken down, Amanda Waller asks, who is next? And that is what takes us to the Owl Cave. With Ultraman coming in, crashing this party, he rips the ceiling right off of this nest. And he lets both of them know that he has had enough destroying much of Owlman's equipment to include his Owlmobile. Superwoman can't help but just laugh her face off because this is exactly what she wanted. She wanted to get under his skin. She wanted to make him mad. She loves making him tick. Amanda Waller coming through their audio, popping up on the television screen because the power ring had given her the address or more or less the phone call frequency to get in communication with with them and she is just letting them know that power ring has been taken down with Ultraman and Superwoman still not really caring about this situation they go ahead and they send in Owlman let him handle this because he should be competent enough to take care of whatever threat this is and so sending him in we see him come flying in on his owl ship and again we see somebody who is just massacring the army of Amanda Wall and that is a reason that Amanda Waller had brought so many individuals. They are all disposable. All people that she is more than willing to throw away for her end goal. And with Siren knocking Owlman out of the sky, he comes crashing down and match he finishes him off. Amanda Waller now having Owlman and Power Ring captured. We pick back up with Superwoman and Ultraman. And Ultraman is really just telling Superwoman that you need to stop all of these games. Because one day, I'm not going to stop myself. One day, eventually, I'm just going to rip you in half. And this doesn't stop her from teasing him. This doesn't stop her from wanting to continue this little game that she plays with him. But before the two of them can get really hostile about this argument, we have Amanda Waller chiming in yet again, letting Ultraman and Superwoman know that they now have two members of theirs tied up. And this situation, it does kind of make Superwoman mad. Because Superwoman, she is very egotistical and territorial. While she may toy with Owlman and Ultraman, at the end of the day, she believes that they are only hers to toy with. And so Amanda Waller having Owlman tied up, it absolutely infuriates her. Now, taking us away from Earth 3 just for a second, we are picking up on Earth 0, and we have Rick Flag and his Suicide Squad. Now, Rick Flag, he has tasked himself with taking down Amanda Waller, believing that she has gone too far with the entire US government after her every agency trying to hunt her down Rick Flag has taken it upon himself to create his own suicide squad and go after her the only problem they ended up face to face with a clay face kaiju and we last left off with the team they were in absolute distress and that has not changed their only weapon truly being Zod he is what is able to break them away they're not able to defeat Clayface, he is simply trying to get them out of his grasp. And Rick Flag, he was supposed to have some backup. That backup was supposed to come in the form of Dr. Rodriguez. And right now, Dr. Rodriguez, she is trying to get in communication with him, but things are just too crazy. They are too hectic. And so, as a last resort, we see her inject herself with a serum. Supposedly, it is supposed to give her powers. And as she goes to run off, we see her begin to turn into sand, with Rick Flag and his Suicide Squad quickly recognizing that they can't beat Clayface. The only thing they can do is maybe banish him to the Phantom Zone. With Zod opening up a portal, we see the Phantom Zone, it begins to suck everything in. And as the Clayface Kaiju begins to go in, so does Cheetah, so does Zod. 
and as all of them begin to fly into the Phantom Zone, we see Clayface randomly drop out of the sky, maybe being too big. It doesn't really go into detail on why Clayface wasn't sucked into the Phantom Zone. We just see the portal close up, and then Bloodsport, Peacemaker, and Rick Flag are face to face with our Kaiju. And that is what's going to take us back to Earth 3. Floating above the city, believing that Owlman and Power Ring were competent enough to take care of Amanda Waller, they are quickly recognizing that is not the case. And so, with Superwoman and Ultraman charging into battle, we have Match who goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superwoman, grabbing a hold of her and launching her into the sky. Match's only job is to keep Superwoman busy, to keep her preoccupied. With Ultraman down on the ground just wasting people, burning them alive, because they wanted Ultraman. Amanda Waller called him out, and so he is here. But as Ultraman is trying to kill Amanda Waller, he is unable to hit her, not understanding what is going on, almost as if these are mirages. One second she is here, the next she's a hundred yards away. But after a couple of times of doing this, this is when Ultraman recognizes that there is a speedster in the midst. That speedster is the one and only Johnny Quick. Now we know that Johnny Quick, he died. We saw his death and Ultraman, he buried him. So the question now stands, how are you alive right before me? But Johnny Quick tries to tell him that it does make sense. All of this is going to make sense if you just hear Amanda Waller out. And as we head back to Earth Zero, our Suicide Squad are still entangled with Clayface. Their only saving grace just happens to be Dr. Rodriguez, with her coming in looking like Sandman from Marvel. 20 stories tall herself, she goes in and she hugs Clayface embracing him and bringing him into her arms. She calms him down, she relaxes him. Like a giant, terrified baby, we see Clayface go into dormancy. Dr. Rodriguez essentially babied him to sleep. And so now with their Clayface problem being taken care of, and Dr. Rodriguez now really having abilities and powers, we pick back up on Earth 3. The conversation between Amanda Waller and and Ultraman. And Amanda Waller lets him know that she doesn't think he wants to rule this world. Not really. He wants the respect. He wants the spoils of war. But he doesn't want to deal with policy. He doesn't want to deal with law enforcement. Governing, she says, is truly beneath him. But it is not beneath her. And she's not here to trick him. She's not here to try and take his power. Feeding his ego, saying that there is no way she could ever do this. At the end of the day, he is a god. There is no way that she could ever control him. Not with any army, no matter the case. And what she does want is his distractions, all of his frustrations, the things that he doesn't want to deal with on a day-in, day-out basis. She wants to take all of the grunt work. This world, it will belong to Ultraman, but he can be a god and not a king, and let Amanda Waller handle all of the rest. For example, this is where she has Talon grab hold of Owlman, grabbing him, putting him above his head. He brings him down at the snap of Amanda Waller's fingers, and we hear the crunch. We see the break as Owlman is almost broken in two. This is Amanda Waller proving that she is a problem solver for Ultraman and not a nuisance. This is something that Ultraman always wanted to do, but didn't want the others to turn on him. But with Amanda Waller taking the blame, it can all be focused on her. And our other Suicide Squad, run by Rick Flag on Earth Zero, now out of the grasp of Clayface, it is time that they made their move, ready to do whatever it takes. We see them open up a gateway, and what is remaining of this Suicide Squad, they charge headfirst into Earth 
number three. What they did not expect to see is Amanda Waller standing directly in front of them. And behind her is her brand new Justice League. Alright gang, so where we last left off, Rick Flagg and his Suicide Squad, they had made their arrival on the scene. Getting to Earth 3 thinking that they are going to stop Amanda Waller. That is, until they run into the Crime Syndicate. Now this comic is going to be jumping back and forth a little bit. With the first opening pages, we are seeing Rick Flag, Bloodsport, and a few others. They are all looking a hot mess right now, and that is because they barely escaped with their lives from Earth 3. And showing us everything that was transpiring on Earth 3, we see the crime syndicate really just mopping the floor with Rick Flag and his team. Because the truth is, they did not expect to find a murderous Superman. They didn't expect to find a Justice League on the other side that is sided with Amanda Waller. Going over to Earth 3 in hopes just to stop her. Now they're recognizing that it is far too late. And now this Suicide Squad is doing everything they can just to be able to escape. We see Ambush Bug and Peacemaker. The two of them, they pop into a location somewhere in a karaoke bar. Because the two of them, they were about to get freaking squashed and Ambush Bug barely saved their lives. If he had not teleported them to this location, it would have been very likely that Power Ring would have crushed Peacemaker. And that's because the crime syndicate, they're not a Justice League. They are really just people with the powers of Justice League members. And the true thing about them is they will kill you in a split second. So with Ambush Bug getting Peacemaker out of there, we are shown Amanda Waller and a giant glass vat of what appears to be sand. This sand is Dr. Rodriguez turning herself into Sandwoman, all in some kind of attempt to be able to help Rick Flag and his Suicide Squad stop Amanda Waller. But in all of the chaos, while they were having their battle with the crime syndicate, it really looked like she might have the upper hand. With her body changing at the molecular level, becoming a sand monster, hoping, hoping that this might be able to hold him. But the truth is, he is a freaking Superman. And so break free of her grip, he uses his heat vision and he begins to turn her into glass. But this gives Rick Flag and some of the others the opportunity to make their escape. With her turning into glass, they use Mirror Master and his abilities to transport them to a safe location. Unfortunately for Dr. Rodriguez, we see Ultraman smash that glass into pieces. And though Dr. Rodriguez, she lays here shattered, she is not dead. Because the truth is, she is sand. And not even Amanda Waller actually knows how to kill sand. I guess theoretically you could turn her into glass and just keep her in that form. But then the question remains, can she break free in the glass form? So on and so forth. There's a lot we don't know about her abilities. I'm sure that we're going to be exploring much later on. And so with the majority of this suicide squad really being taken out that is when we are taken to the depths of hell we have the brainiac etragon 666 and right now he has superboy and nocturne they are currently down in hell though they wouldn't really notice it because they are too infatuated with one another not really caring where they are finally accepting the the relationship finally accepting their feelings for one another for them it doesn't matter where they are they are just in enjoying being together and the two of them they didn't really play any kind of big part in the battle we saw going on for a while there we had superboy aka match he was more of a bizarro than anything else it wasn't until nocturne was able to break this free of him and in doing so we see him come back his personality is back saving the girl that he loves but in doing so Etrigon brainiac 666 was right behind them and that is what brings us to Talon and Culebra picking up after the fight had all gone down with Amanda 
Waller believing that the two of them are still working for her. Right now, they are standing in front of a coffin that belongs to Owlman. Because the truth is, or at least that is what appears to have happened. But the truth is, Talon had broke his back and made it look like he killed him under the orders of Amanda Waller. The truth is, he did not do this. He wanted to keep Owlman separate because Owlman is the closest thing they have to Batman on this planet. And if they want to take down the crime syndicate, Owlman is exactly how they do that. And as they sit here, we see Calabra. She begins to turn into a ghost. With Talon not really sure what happened, the truth of the matter is that she died during the battle. Johnny Quick just pummeled her to death. But as we know, Culebra has been able to come back as a ghost. This really not being explained, not in extreme death anyway. But regardless, what we see is Owlman being extremely cocky, not wanting to help them. So Culebra, she literally possesses Owlman. And while he may be a complete idiot, he is a paranoid one, a vindictive one. And Owlman knows exactly how to take down Ultraman. With them being able to reach out to Ambush Bug and Peacemaker, they send them to the Ultraman's Fortress of Solitude. Because inside of this place, there is a weapon. That weapon is known as a Phantom Zone Projector. This is their plan. This is their goal. They want to banish Ultraman to the Phantom Zone. And with them looking around and finding the projector, it seems things might be looking up for them. That is, until they actually look up and they see Superwoman because this Fortress of Solitude it does not belong to the one and only Ultraman it belongs to Superwoman and with her wasting no time she goes in on Ambush Bug and Peacemaker. Ambush Bug trying to make an escape. The only issue is when he teleports and makes a type of sound. A sound that Superwoman was able to pick up on and so Ambush Bug he gets taken down right here on the spot peacemaker as well and the thing about all of this is superwoman she had no idea that these guys were even going to be here ultraman had given her the phantom zone projector as a gift a very long time ago she kept it up here because she never really needed it there was no reason for her to ever try to take down ultraman but things have now changed and that is all because of Amanda Waller. Believing that she broke Ultraman by them making that pact, by making that deal, murdering her pet, aka Owlman, and then Match had kept her preoccupied. Watching Owlman die though, that was the last straw. With Superwoman going in to take down Amanda Waller, we see Ultraman interfere. With him standing in the way, Superwoman, she came up here for the weapon that can take him down. Unfortunately for them, Amanda Waller and the crime syndicate, they already knew what was up. With the arrival of Johnny Quick coming in and grabbing the projector, grabbing it and being gone in a literal flash. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up with Johnny Quick. Johnny Quick is currently under the orders of Amanda Waller and he is headed to the Flash Museum. Johnny Quick was the one that convince Ultraman to hear out Amanda Waller when she first came to this planet. And that's because he knows what is on the horizon. He knows the great darkness is headed directly for them. When he was stuck inside of the Speed Force, this is where he saw it. The end of everything. With Johnny Quick retrieving whatever item Amanda Waller was asking for that is inside of the Flash Museum, taking us over to Linda Park. She has recently found herself with speedster abilities. This coming out of absolutely nowhere, no one really understanding how this is happening. She has yet to tell anybody. Right now, she is speeding around the neighborhood looking for her children because they snuck out not knowing they got kidnapped by the calculator. And in this kidnapping, they, they ended up eventually freeing themselves and then heading to Jim World to help out Wally West. So with Linda Park 
Europe right now currently just losing her mind trying to figure out what to do but also trying to figure out what the heck is happening and how she got powers. This is where we see the arrival of all the children and Wally West. Of course all of them have some great explaining to do but first they're gonna get Buddy's daughter out of here. Wally West grabbing her and out of here in a flash. Not sure if their mother is going to be severely disappointed in them. They both start just telling her everything about how he got his powers back, about how he's going by the name of Surge now, about how they visited Gym World, they saw a dude with a half purple face, like they're just going into extreme detail about everything all at once. But that all goes silent as they embrace one another. With Linda terrified that something happened to them, she is just happy they're all okay. With the West family now whole again, we are taken to Iron Heights Penitentiary. Not really giving us much detail being extremely vague on what the purpose of this is we are seeing blacksmith released from prison and given a new mission that mission is still classified to us and honestly, this part of the comic, it, it threw me for a loop. This came out of nowhere, and they're just like, bam, Blacksmith's here. We're gonna do something with her, we're not gonna tell you what we're doing yet, but just know that Blacksmith is gonna be showing up and playing some kind of part in whatever is going on. Picking back up with Wally and Linda, with the kids down, they have a conversation over the course of the evening and the next morning. Them just talking about the kids, how Jai is terrified of Etragon because he had punched him in the face when he was possessed by Eclipso. But what Linda is seeing more than anything is how much Wally is going. After everything he just experienced, he's concerned about his day job. After everything that has just happened, he also wants to take a break. He wants to slow down. He just wants to have a freaking nap and a day off. Linda really starting to recognize that maybe now is not the best time to let him know that, hey, I, I have speed. I'm a speedster now. And while she's debating on what the best course of action is, if she should try to tell him now or not, this is where Wally West gets the notification that the Flash Museum's alarms are going off. Quickly suiting up and heading out the door, Linda pretty much had her decision made for her. She's going to hold on to this information, at least for the time being, and wait until it's a less hectic time to inform him of her new abilities. Flashing over to the Flash Museum, we have Johnny Quick making his way through here, and this is where he finds the Cosmic Treadmill. The only issue is, the one here on display, that is exactly what it is. It's a display model, it doesn't actually work. As he begins tearing this thing apart, trying to figure out where the real one might be, we have the arrival of Wally West. With the Flash telling him that he is trespassing, Johnny Quick, he saw him inside Inside the Speed Force. And he is somebody that might have been in there longer than him. And so because of that, he is assuming that Wally West, he had to have seen the end of all things. That the darkness is coming for all of them. That's why Amanda Waller needs this treadmill. Wally at this point, he has no clue what the heck is going on. He doesn't really understand what Johnny Quick is trying to tell him. The only thing he heard out of all of that is Amanda Waller and Cosmic Treadmill. Those two words together is enough for Wally West to say no bueno. Johnny Quick truly does believe though that she is the only one who has a plan. He saw Wally West die. It was literally in between seconds, a flash of light, and Wally West disappeared. Johnny Quick simply stalling him, feeling the vibrations of the building, and through these vibrations, he is able to feel the cosmic treadmill underneath them. The two of them, they go phasing down into the basement, and while they do this, through a reflection in one of these mirrors, that is where we see Mirror Master making his way into the Flash Museum. He has been working with Rick Flagg, so we can only assume that he is here to help out the Flash and take down Johnny Quick. The Flash and Johnny, they're going toe to toe. The Flash getting the wind knocked out of him. He is down only for a second. Johnny Quick makes his way to the treadmill. Hopping onto it, this is where he gets a punch in the face. 
through the reflection on the screen that is on the treadmill. Mirror Master punching him and coming out. Wally West looking up and seeing that there is both Johnny Quick and Mirror Master. And the Flash goes in to try and stop him. Doesn't know what he's up to. Doesn't know anything that is going on right now. And while Mirror Master tells him that he doesn't understand the consequences if they get that treadmill, he throws his mirrors. The Flash is running in. His limbs start to come off in these mirrors. He is able to reverse himself back up just enough so that the mirrors aren't taking off his limbs. Jumping to an image of beforehand. Jumping to the time where Johnny Quick was brought out of the Speed Force. Etragon Brainiac 666 and Amanda Waller were able to grab him and bring him. And he saw everything. Telling Amanda Waller everything that happened. She swears that they are going to win. That if he does her bidding, they cannot lose this fight. Johnny Quick putting all of his faith into Amanda Waller and whatever scheme she has planned up. That is what brought him to the cosmic treadmill. Amanda Waller is planning to do something with it. With the Flash and Mirror Master too busy fighting one another, it gives Johnny Quick the opportunity to run over to the treadmill. And as soon as he hops on it, Amanda Waller teleports him and the machine out of this place. With Johnny Quick able to make his escape, Mirror Master turns to Wally West and he's more or less like, dude, like what the heck? Like you really do have no clue what is going on right now. And Wally admits that he's definitely been out of the loop. He hasn't heard anything about what's going on. And Mirror Master, he has no time to fill him in. Like literally no time. He has to get out of here and get back to Rick Flag, figure out what their next course of action is. As Wally looks around, doesn't really know what to make of this day, he's about to go find out exactly what is happening. Alright gang, so as we dive into part 4 of War for Earth 3, we are picking up with some of our students known as the Bat Pack. They see themselves as a young Dark Justice League. All of the students and many of the teachers, they are currently hidden away because of everything that happened with Red X. We found out that Brick was just one of the Red X's and he was being mentored by another Red X and we don't know his identity. But with him out there on the loose, they can't afford for anybody to be out in the open, believing that any of the kids, any of the teachers could be a target. Until they bring him in, everyone is having to be hidden away. We have Stitch Astro projecting herself to the classroom, Donna Troy trying to figure out where everybody is. Stitch telling the others that they need to get back to the classrooms. They all head off, not knowing that in that mirror, we have a hand reaching through. The hand belonging to Mirror Master. Picking up with Raven, we have Changeling and Cyborg. They are currently laying down on these tables. Both of them in very critical condition. The doctors are telling them that they might not survive. The best thing they can do for them is make them comfortable. And what will happen is going to happen. With Raven having a very hard time accepting this fact, we see the arrival of Gorilla Greg and, and Cybra, like a cyborg variant from Earth 12. And they have been racking their heads together. They have been trying to figure out a way that they can save these two. With Gorilla Greg giving his plan to the Star Labs people, they offer him a job right on the spot just for the theory. But his internship to the side, he comes up with some magnificent way to save both of them. Now, it doesn't really tell us the science or how he's going to do it. It just says Gorilla Greg and Cybra figure it out. And so while the two of them get to work on saving the lives of these two, Nightwing is returning, and right now he is just so concerned. Having Wally West the Flash here, they have called everybody they can to try and find Red X, but he has completely disappeared. He has gone ghost and there is no sign of him. Of course, Roy Harper, he has been behind on everything. He's just now realizing that Red X is still alive and everything going on. He's been completely out of the loop, but he is now back back on board to help as much as he can. There has been a running theory that Red X could very well be Roy Harper. Now, it might fit into the timeline, it might not. Neither of them have been seen at the same place at the same time. Though I don't think it's a very solid theory, it's definitely a possibility. But at least for now, they believe that they are safe. 
This safe house is going to protect them and they have nothing to worry about. Little do they know, down in the basement, Mirror Master has found his way in. And with Mirror Master coming here, this brings Rick Flag and his Suicide Squad. Picking up with the Brat Pack playing hooky. They're skipping class and we see the arrival of Kid Flash. Wallace West comes running in, tells them that they need to get back to class. Wally West comes in behind him and tells them that he really shouldn't be so hard on these kids, but Wallace really wants to set an example. Meanwhile, Wally, he just wants them all to, to really just lay back, have some fun, especially with so much that has been going on. He is also trying to find a nickname for Wallace. Obviously, he doesn't want to go with Wally. He's trying to find something in between. It's just, it's failing miserably. Picking up downstairs, we have Bloodsport and Mirror Master. They have found the secret armory. This place is packed full of weapons. They are stealing everything that they can. That is, until they see Arsenal. Almost at the same time, we have Nightwing and Starfire running in to Boomerang. While Wally and Wallace are currently in the cafeteria, they're sitting down they're going to have a bite to eat. This is when Rick Flag makes his arrival. Rick Flag, he doesn't look like he is trying to fight, but his suicide squad, they on the other hand, they are going all in. And while everybody is beating the crap out of each other, we see Rick Flag and Wally West, they come running into the room, letting everyone know that they need to stand down. Nightwing at this point, he doesn't really understand what's going on or why he wants them to stand down. The Flash lets Nightwing know that Rick Flag has come to ask a question. They have come humbly and respectfully asking for the help of the Titans. This drops the jaw of every single one of the Titans. All of them in complete disbelief. Rick Flag he sits them down and he tells them everything. Everything with Amanda Waller, everything with her going to Earth 3, all of the odds that are stacked against them. Of course the Titans, they are are going to help in any way they can. Many of the kids, including Kid Flash, want to join in this fight. Starfire says that none of them can participate. This is going to be too dangerous. It's too risky. She is even going to have Kid Flash stepping out of this one. But outside of that, the Titans, they are ready to go. Hopping into their aircraft, Rick Flag, Suicide Squad, and the Titans joined together are going to take on Amanda Waller and her Justice League. With them taking off and headed out, Wally West does let Dick Grayson know that he wasn't really on board with the idea of leaving Wallace behind because Kid Flash he's been through a lot and though this is going to be a very dangerous mission, the truth of the matter, this is something that he could have handled. But Nightwing feels, with everything going on with Red X, they're gonna need someone like Kid Flash left behind to protect the students just in case Red X decides to make his arrival. What they didn't know is the Brat Pack they stowed away on the ship, not knowing what they were getting themselves into, just knowing that the Titans were headed out. They thought they were headed on an adventure and technically they are but this adventure it is likely going to get them killed all right gang so as we dive into the finale we are picking up on earth 3 and currently ultraman he is just watching everything unfold amanda waller made him a promise that he wouldn't have to do anything he would just be the god ruler above all Amanda Waller taking care of the day-to-day, -day, taking care of any nuisances, if you will. Those nuisances include the Rebel Suicide Squad, enlisting the help of Teen Titans, as well as the Flash. They are trying with great effort to win this war. Even with Ultraman out of the picture, they are still having a hard time staying above water. With the battle raging on, we see Calabra, who has been a ghost. This really hasn't been explained either. She kind of just came back as a ghost. But being a ghost, she is able to possess people. We see her possess our Green Lantern, taking him over and charging full speed at Ultraman. All he does is stick out his arm, and Calabra is shot out of the body. The thing is though, Ultraman's not jumping in this fight. He is simply just walking through, and anybody that gets in his way, he's just pushing them away. Seeing this as mere insects fighting, he has no want or need to join into this. Meanwhile, Amanda Waller watching all of this unfold. This is where we see the Bat Pack. 
Now, these guys are from Teen Titans Academy. They had snuck on the ship of the Teen Titans. I guess you could just call them Titans now, because they are the teachers, they are the mentors. They came here trying to put a stop to Amanda Waller. With her turning around and seeing the teenest of teens, she can't help but laugh hysterically. While all of this was going on, Harley Quinn and Mirror Master, they snuck into Amanda Waller's plants, taking the head of Yorick. And Yorick's really hard to explain if you haven't been keeping up with the Suicide Squad. But Yorick really is just kind of a, a random character that has been brought in that has advanced technology and advanced intelligence to do everything that Amanda Waller needs. As they sit here and discuss where Ultraman may be, because they want to keep eyes on him. If he decides to join this fight, it will be over in a matter of seconds. This is where Yorick's head turns on, not really understanding what is going on here. We pick back up with Amanda Waller watching out the window, and Deadshot takes a shot at her. With Parker stepping in front of her, Parker takes the bullet. With him going down, Amanda Waller, she initiates a very, a very cruel and horrible tactic. And the off chance that Deadshot decided that he wanted to switch sides, to go against her. While the bomb in his head may not be active, the bomb in Talon's head, it definitely is. To teach them all a lesson, she detonates the head of Talon. Moreover, she has taken Deadshot's brother from all over the multiverse, having his body on the outside of this building, multiple versions all along the glass. This is a human shield that she has built up, and so if Deadshot doesn't decide to continue to work for her, every single version of his brother will die. At the Fortress of Solitude, we have Peacemaker, Ambush Bug, and Donna Troy of Earth-3. This Fortress of Solitude, it belongs to Superwoman. With her hating Ultraman as much as them right now, she came up here to get the Phantom Projector, only for Johnny Quick to steal it out from underneath them. Canary had knocked down the fortress, and Superwoman is the only thing keeping them alive right now. Peacemaker trying to wake up Ambush Bug, having some dialogue that ticks off Superwoman. She drops everything she has, and she takes off. Ambush Bug able to teleport them out just in the nick of time. Taking us down to hell, we have Brainiac Atragon 666 imprisoning Match and Nocturna down here. This isn't really prison for them because now they just get to be together. Amanda Waller has come down to hell because she has a proposition for them. With Peacekeeper, Rick Flag, and Ambush Bug all meeting back up and knowing the location of Ultraman, they want to go pay him a visit. With him currently at the zoo, they have gone to have a conversation. And as he sees them rolling up with guns, he tells them like, no, you can't do anything, right? Like if, if I snap my fingers, you guys are gonna die. What Rick Flag has come here to do is convince Ultraman to go against Amanda Waller, telling Ultraman that he has been manipulated. You call yourself a god, you see yourself as the king of this planet, but the truth is, you are just a puppet. Amanda Waller, she is doing everything. The truth is, Amanda Waller, she has been manipulating you. She is currently just keeping you out of the way for whatever plan she actually has divulging that that plan is to seal this planet off from the rest of the multiverse. Seeing the plans firsthand, he asks Ultraman, how do you not see that you are her superhuman puppet? And he's really not trying to offend him. Rick Flag is simply letting him know that he has been that puppet as well. Ultraman in a fit of fury. He uses his heat vision and he demolishes tons of giraffes and zoo animals. Not really sure if this was the best of ideas. It is the only thing Rick Flag can think of to take down Amanda Waller. And that's what takes us to Waller's HQ. With the Titans and the Rebel Suicide Squad working together, they have now confronted Amanda Waller. With Deadshot, Match, Nocturna all by her side, this is not the only individuals they have. Having Yorick's body here, it is still operating, exposing the Bat Pack. Nightwing pleading with her not to hurt these kids. 
but Amanda Waller has no intention of doing that, saying that the only thing she ever wanted to do was keep people safe. And so if everybody comes inside, they will teleport them all back to their world. It will be free and clear. There is no catches, no obligations, just go home. Unfortunately for Amanda Waller, it's not going to be that simple. With Ultraman carrying half of a freaking skyscraper, he is livid. Now, of course, this isn't what Rick Flagg wanted, though you really can't expect much different when you have a psychopathic Superman and you tell him that he is nothing more than a puppet to some regular person. With everyone rushing inside, they are doing their best to get everyone teleported out. And Nightwing really doesn't want to leave, but though those kids are their first priority. Getting them to safety is all that matters. Rick Flag telling her that she tries to keep people safe, yes, but you do it by all means possible. There is nothing morally or ethically right about what you are doing. Matt's trying to let them know to just hear her out. Rick Flag proclaiming what could she possibly say? What she could possibly tell him that would make him change his mind about everything that has happened here. Amanda Waller exposing that she has the Phantom Projector. She always was going to double cross Ultraman. And while she says she was going to do this regardless because he's a monster, Rick Flagg refuses to accept that she is somehow the good guy in all of this. That it doesn't work this way. You don't get to play hero all of a sudden. And he just doesn't trust her. Amanda Waller saying that yes, she has done horrible things. And none of it, everything she has done was never enough. But she truly does believe that she can save Earth 3. These people on this planet. And the first step is stopping Ultraman. Asking Rick Flag if he will team up with them this one last time. And even Nightwing chimes in. Letting him know that he really does get it. Your mentor disappointed you. Went way too far over and over. But is today about today? And at this point, Rick Flagg, he truly does feel like he's just losing his mind. Like, how can nobody else see what I am seeing? After everything she has done, everything she has manipulated, all of the deaths and the lives that she has taken to achieve this goal. And you guys are going to sit back and say, well, she's the lesser of two evils. And so he takes that phantom projector and he smashes it on the ground. Not trusting her, not trusting the situation, not knowing what the inevitable outcome would be. He's not taking chances. And with Ultraman ripping down these walls, exposing Amanda Waller as he is about to take her out. This is where we see the arrival of Superwoman. Knocking him across the face, letting him know how disgusted she is with him. Becoming Amanda Waller's puppet. Letting her take everything from them that they have built. He was supposed to be a god, but he is nothing more than a man. As the two titans have their battle raging across the city, this gave them the window. An opportunity for Yorick to try and get the Phantom Projector back online. Amanda Waller telling them to turn the teleporters back online as soon as possible because she is getting out of here. Our heroes, of course, they cannot leave everyone in this world to this destruction. With Ambush Bug and Mirror Master going after Ultraman. The two of them flinging him from mirror to teleportation. From the bottom of the sea to a volcano to the moon. This is only going to slow him down temporarily. This gives them the opportunity to try to fix the Phantom Projector. Connecting Yorick's head back to his body, this gives him the ability to figure out how to solve this problem. As our Rebel Suicide Squad, they move in on Ultraman, he is throwing up Kryptonite. Indulging in too much of it, he is starting to get into a weakened state, hoping that this would be their chance, their opportunity. Everyone makes a move on him, but no one is able to touch him. With the projector fixed and powered up by the lantern, we see it turned on and Ultraman is sucked into it. Begging for Superwoman to help him out. Telling him he is pathetic, she watches as he gets sucked into this puck. And so while the battle against Ultraman has been completed, Rick Flagg is going to lead the crime syndicate with the keys, hoping that they will rebuild to make it better. And Amanda Waller, she is MIA, with Talon and Calabra being ghosts. They're trying to figure out what they're gonna do next, and this is where Amanda Waller teleports back in. Match coming in and protecting her, taking Rick Flagg's gun and breaking it in half. 
the Rebel Suicide Squad, the Titans, the Flash, they are all being teleported out of here. And now having Ultraman captured and encapsulated more or less, they are using him as a power source. Because what Yorick has been building is a way to disconnect them from the multiverse. Having Ultraman trapped inside of this, using him as a battery, they now have the capability to do so. And with the press of a button, just like that, Earth 3 vanished adrift the multiverse cosmos. With Match now putting on the cape, this is everything Amanda Waller had promised him. A new world, a new opportunity, a real chance to forge their own identities. Not only that, if Amanda Waller steps out of line, they will be here to stop her. As we see Amanda Waller's Justice League made up of the Emerald Knight, Ectragon Brainiac 666, Superwoman, Match, Johnny Quick, Nocturna, and Canary. Just like that, Amanda Waller won. And that will be the end of this story. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, I really didn't think they were going to go this far. I didn't think they were going to let Amanda Waller win. And while this is a little bit different than the future state event we had seen, the outcome was still the same. Amanda Waller has isolated all of Earth 3 because she knows the great darkness it is coming for all of them. Hoping by isolating this planet, she will be able to keep it away from what is about to, to unfold in the Omniverse. But I really have enjoyed this event. The way that they have betrayed Ultraman, I really do enjoy because he seems like the more egotistical, just full of himself, looks at everybody like they're beneath him. And that hubris is what essentially got him defeated. It was surprising how many people really just got on board with Amanda Waller. It was really like, you know, we're already at this point, we might as well finish it. And Rick Flag is the only one being the real voice of reason in all of it. At the end of the day, none of it mattered though. She outplayed every single one of them. And while not everything went according to plan, everything panned out exactly as she wanted it to. The question now, how does all of this play into what is about to happen? With the Dark Crisis, the death of the Justice League, the Great Darkness making its arrival. Is Earth 3 going to stay hidden? Is it going to be the last safe haven for all of humanity? Or is the Great Darkness going to find them? Will they be the first victim to what comes next? But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always donate by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. If you can't do that, do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.